Uh, good evening, my fellow Washingtonians. Uh, I'd like to speak to you directly tonight about the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this is a pandemic that threatens to overwhelm our society without decisive action. We've now confirmed that more than 2,000 Washingtonians have contracted the virus, and there are likely thousands more that have not yet been diagnosed. COVID-19 has taken more than 100 lives in our state, and that's a number that will continue to rise, unfortunately. We know our hearts ache for all of the Washingtonians and their families affected by this virus. And as we move forward, we cannot forget uh, the losses that those families have suffered. This is a human tragedy on a scale we cannot yet project. So it's time to hunker down in order to win this fight. So tonight, I am issuing a stay home order to fight this virus. This is Washington's stay home, stay healthy order. This includes a ban on all gatherings and closures of many businesses, unless those businesses are essential to the healthy functioning of our community or are able to let employees work remotely from home. It is still safe to go outside using social distancing of six feet, but really only for essential purposes. The grocery stores, doctor's offices, and other essential businesses will remain open. This also does not prohibit people from merely going outside to enjoy a walk on a sunny spring day. So life will go on, but for all of us in every part of Washington, uh, it has to do so with this in mind. Stay home, stay healthy. The less time you spend out in public, the more lives we can save. The more time we can buy to fight the waves of this virus coming down on us now and in the immediate future. I'd like to talk with you about uh, this order and what it means for you and your loved ones and our communities. This order builds on other unprecedented steps we have had to take to protect Washingtonians already, including the closure of schools, restaurants, entertainment venues, and other businesses where people congregate. We've been thoughtful and deliberate in making these very tough choices. And I've been very clear on the need for Washingtonians to stay home already. But I have heard from health professionals, local officials, and others that people still aren't practicing these precautions. And that is one of the reasons why we have to take these steps. These measures are more stringent, and our goal is the same, to reduce social interactions, physical interactions, where this highly contagious virus can spread. This weapon distancing ourselves is the only weapon against this virus. And we have proven that it can work, but only if we actually use it. Now, here's what this order will do. Effective for a minimum of two weeks, it essentially requires every Washingtonian to minimize physical contact with others unless they're pursuing some essential activities like grocery shopping, going to a doctor's appointment or the pharmacy or if they work at a business deemed essential to the continued functioning during an emergency. So this does not mean you can't go outside. If you feel like going for a walk, gardening, going for a bike ride, we consider these things essential activity too for everyone's physical and mental health. We all just need to practice social distancing of at least six feet to protect ourselves and others everywhere, all the time. This order will immediately ban all gatherings of people for social, spiritual, and recreational purposes. This includes events that affect the old and the young in our state. If you want to have parties on the beach or play pickup basketball at the park or have sleepovers, these are no longer allowed for at least a couple weeks. This also applies to some of the most important gatherings in people's lives, like weddings and funerals. For the sake of all, even these occasions have to be postponed. So 
So 48 hours from now, this order will close many businesses in our state, excluding those deemed essential in these times, or, or businesses where employees can work remotely without coming into contact with others, physical contact, that is. If a non-essential workplace can close now, it should. Some businesses are essential and are not being closed by this order. We've chosen these essential businesses based largely on federal guidelines. Essential businesses and personnel not limited by this order uh, include those that help us fight this outbreak, including emergency services, healthcare industries, critical manufacturing, childcare providers, food and agriculture, transportation, financial services, uh, defense industries, and critical local government operations, including courts. And the media will continue to operate as well. Uh, the media has just been absolutely critical to keep all of us informed about this virus. Now, of course, we care about all employees. So any essential business or entity allowed to operate under this order must implement rules that help facilitate social distancing of at least six feet. And I should also say to our many struggling restaurants, uh, this order does not stop you from providing to-go and delivery service, as many uh, of restaurants are currently doing. Many of Washington's sovereign tribal governments around our state have already implemented similar measures and other important steps. They've been exceptional partners in this effort. Now, we expect everyone in our state to comply with these orders voluntarily. For a simple fact, it's because everyone knows that all of our loved ones are at risk here. But make no mistake, this order is enforceable by law and can be enforced. And we know that to be socially irresponsible in these times is to risk the lives of our loved ones. The, the rapid growth in the number of cases has put our state really in a race against time. We need to grow hospital capacity or else face an even greater public health emergency. And the more of us who stay home, the fewer of us who will the fewer of us who will be infected by COVID-19 and the more lives that will be saved. Now, this is a very difficult choice. And I make this difficult choice knowing it will add to the economic and family hardship many in our state are already feeling as we try to slow and turn back this pandemic. But we need to think about it in these terms. We want to get back to normal as soon as possible. We do not want this lingering intrusion in our lives. And the fastest way to get back to normal is to hit this hard. And that's what we're doing. Why? Because Washingtonians want to get back to business as soon as possible. So to address this, uh, last week I told you about steps we're taking to relieve economic impacts of affected Washingtonians. We continue the search for ways to mitigate the economic impacts of this pandemic on the lives of our 7 million residents. You can learn more about what state assistance is available by visiting coronavirus.wa.gov. And I cannot emphasize the following point strongly enough. For the sake of our neighbors, our health care workers, our seniors and others, no one should make a run on the grocery stores to overstock. If each of us maintain our normal shopping habits, there's really not going to be any, any empty shelves. We feel good about this. So in these uncertain times, I'd encourage everyone to turn to whatever in their lives can bring them hope. What gives me hope are the stories of resilience and of action by individual Washingtonians to aid and comfort each other as we weather this crisis. I've heard stories uh, like the school districts in Tacoma and Puyallup that are launching childcare services for our first responders and medical workers, professionals on the medical front who are working under enormous pressure on the front lines of this war against this virus. 
you know, these are the folks in some way are risking their lives for us. These are the current day heroes. And, and we know that those healthcare workers are going to work so we can stay home and be safe. Our child care workers are a crucial support system in this struggle. And so uh, they're going to work as well. They go to work at great risk to their health so we can stay at home. I'm also inspired by the story of a furniture factory in Muckleteal. It's now using its facilities to produce surgical masks and face shields for Providence healthcare workers to address the threat of protective equipment shortages. And in Yakima, where a small restaurant owner and business, he's only been in business three months before he got hit with this crisis. But he's now serving free brown bag lunches that seniors can pick up daily outside her restaurant. These are the stories that can inspire all of us. And we also know this. While we minimize our physical connections, it is essential that we maximize our emotional connections. We can all help our loved ones every day electronically. And we know this, fundamentally. This challenge is temporary. Schools will reopen. Weddings will happen. Factories will start again. And you'll be able to toast the end of this at your favorite hangout as soon as possible, because we are hitting this hard. But every single Washingtonian needs to enlist themselves in this tumultuous struggle if we are to win. We need every Washingtonian to be thoughtful and calm and compassionate, knowing for certain that we can get through this together. I remind you of the work of one of our, our great uh, poets, Walt Whitman, in Song of Myself, he wrote, of the courage of present times and all times, of fighting through the storm with knuckles tight and not giving back an inch to save others consumed by the tides. We need this spirit now in our state. We need this now in our nation because life will be different in Washington for a while, but we will keep working until this pandemic is defeated. Until then, I make this promise to you, my fellow Washingtonians, and it's borrowed from the same great poet. Be of good cheer. We will not desert you. Stay home. Stay healthy. Thank you, and be well. <laughs>